What's up guys, today I'm going to be doing the clutch master cylinder, slave cylinder and the stainless steel clutch line install on my 350Z. And I bought these parts OEM and uh, I bought them on eBay but they were from an actual Nissan dealership so I'm going to be showing you those now. And so I've got the master cylinder here and uh, this is the part number if you guys needed it. And then here's the slave cylinder. I was going to go with the uh, Willwood setup but I didn't learn about that setup until after I bought these. I bought these about, <laughs> I want to say around four or five months ago now. Just never got around to replacing anything. So here's the uh, stainless steel clutch line here. It's, uh, it feels pretty nice. I'm going to be wrapping it with this heat wrap as well. And then I'm using the uh, modal RBF uh, 600. It's the DO24 has a much higher boiling point so wet boiling point and dry boiling point and if your engine ever gets this hot then it's not a good thing anyway so this should never get to a boiling point and have that mushy feel when you press down the clutch so here's this and then it's got the little uh, crush washers and the uh, bolt inside and this is basically what I'm going to be replacing today I'm going to be using this uh, motive uh, power bleeder oh, that's not good I'm going to be using this motive power bleeder and I'm going to be using just this bottle with a uh, hose going into the top so I can uh, bleed, the, bleed the system after I'm done and uh, make sure that there's no air uh, left in the system. So I'm going to pull the car in and then uh, I'm going to get back to you guys. All right, so there is a slave cylinder. So there's a slave cylinder right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna let that drain. I'm gonna open the bleeder valve and I'm just gonna let it drain out while I'm uh, waiting. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna take out those two 10, or not 10 millimeter, but two 12 millimeter, I think they are. I'm gonna have to check, but I think they're 12s. I'm gonna take those two out right there and then focus and then I'm gonna have that I'm gonna pull the slave cylinder down through this hole right here and then I'm going to let it hang and then I'm going to uh, open the drain valve so it can so it can drain out and uh, that way I can focus where it's draining instead of having it drain all over my brace here and uh, possibly get brake fluid on my floor Oh, what I should have done in the beginning was uh, take my master cylinder lid off. So I think I'm going to lower the car, take the lid off my master cylinder, the reservoir anyways. That way it, has, um, it doesn't have any force uh, preventing it from spewing out of this hole. So air can move through, bring out the old fluid, and then I can put in the new fluid with the motive power bleeder. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to take this lid off and drain this because I don't want to get any fluid on the paint of my car anywhere or have it spill on anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking this lid off then I'm going underneath the car opening the drain valve on the slave cylinder or I might just take off the slave cylinder in general and uh, have it drain that way. So now you can see I've got my slave cylinder hanging here. I'm going to just use this. This already has a little bit of brake fluid in it. I had some brake calipers inside of it. So now I'm going to open this and see how well it flows out. If I want it to flow a little bit faster, I'm going to take this 12 off here. And then uh, hopefully I don't spill this anywhere. And the little drain valve here on the slave cylinder is an 8 millimeter wrench. So it doesn't splatter all over the place. I'm just going to throw this in here so it uh, absorbs it while it's coming down and doesn't splatter all over the outside. You can see how it started on the sides of the container. 
So I'm gonna let that drain and I'm gonna turn the fan on the engine and cool it down so that way I can start uh, uh, taking everything apart. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to prepare the, uh, the stainless steel uh, clutch one and I'm going to um, basically put the heat wrap around it, zip tie it in place, and um, pretty decent amount. I've got plenty enough to, to get it on here. And I'm just gonna be using these little black zip ties to zip tie it all in place, and uh, then it'll be ready to be put on the slave cylinder. How come every single video I do, I get so many phone calls. All right, guys, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so now that I've got, um, I've got, uh, I probably put a little too many zip ties on here, but I got carried away while talking on the phone. Um, now I'm gonna figure out the position that I should put this line on so I can tighten it down. I know this is bleeder valve is supposed to go on the top, so I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go take a look at the other slave cylinder and then I'm gonna see what position I should put this line on. All right, so I was right. So this pretty much goes like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this through here with the little crush washer. Put it through like that. Put another crush washer on the other side. Kind of just thread it on for now. It goes this direction. I think I'll tighten it down a little bit more after I get it on the car, just cause it's hard to hold this in place while tightening this and I don't want to bend this piece of the line and it has to be able to clear your bleeder valve here so make sure that you can get a wrench on and be able to easily uh, turn this because you want to be able to bleed everything when you're done all right so before i even took this old one off i kind of bolted this up and man does that look nice in there so basically this line here i don't know if you guys can see it is just gonna come right here where the factory line goes and it's supposed to bolt right up, so hopefully it does. And uh, I'm gonna take this old one off here. The major issue I remember is taking off this retaining clip up here. There's like a little retaining clip that holds that and that's kind of like a bitch to get off. So I'm gonna work on taking that off and loosening this line and now I'll get back to you guys. To get a little bit more space, I'm just gonna remove this catalytic converter bracket. There's the little clip right there. That is so damn hard to get to. Come on, focus. Seriously. There. That little thing. Okay, and there's the old one right there. Okay, basically, I got that about as tight as I could. Um, hopefully it doesn't leak when I replace everything because that was honestly, I think, most likely gonna be the most difficult part of this process. Just because on my hard line, you can see 
Let's see if I can get it to focus up here. All right, so on the top of my hard line right there, the, the bolt on the hard line stripped. Uh, didn't completely strip, I was still able to um, use parts of it, but for a majority, um, it was not the greatest, so hopefully it doesn't leak because I really don't feel like taking that back off. Now I'm going to use my 14. And finish tightening down the, uh, the stainless line on the slave cylinder. Okay, now that that's tightened down, I'm gonna make sure that the uh, bleeder valve is tight. And it is. And I'm gonna tighten down the, um, the rest of the slave cylinder with the uh, 12 millimeter here. Lots of Z's around here. All right, so that's pretty much it down here. I'm gonna throw up this uh, catalytic converter bracket and um, hopefully that's it for down here besides the bleeding process. All right, so uh, next up is removing uh, the master cylinder and uh, um, I think I'm gonna lower the car down and get on the inside of the car. Hopefully I don't have to move my car off of the off of the lift and then put it back on the lift. Maybe I should have taken the master out first, but I wanted to make sure this was drained before I took the master out, so. All right guys, so I'm gonna lower the car and I'll get back to you. All right, so I'm just gonna overview everything down here on the bottom one more time. So these two are 12 millimeters, it's a 14 millimeter, and then You've got a 10 millimeter up here on the hard line, and uh, that's pretty much it. These were all 14s that I took off from uh, the catalytic converter bracket, and uh, that's it for down here. All right, so now you can see up here, and you can take a look inside of my uh, my reservoir. It looks really, yeah, looks really bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbolt these two 10 millimeters right here. There's two of them for uh, the reservoir. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move back here and uh, underneath um, the ABS pump here, there's the hard line where it connects to the master cylinder. I'm gonna take that 10 millimeter off there and then uh, I'm gonna move inside and begin taking off uh, everything else. I'm just gonna throw this down right under here, just in case. So, all right, so now that I've removed the hard line, I'll show you guys here. Now that I've removed the, uh, I've removed <clears throat> this here, and then this hard line right here that connects to the top of the master cylinder. All right, so I know there's a pin that comes through right there. And um, so the pin is right there. I need to take that pin out, and I'm gonna be try. I'm gonna be try. I'm gonna try to be as careful as I can to uh, to not um, mess with the adjustment of this one. And then I'm gonna count the threads on the new one, and I'm going to adjust that one to the same length as this one. Basically. If you're doing this, you probably already know the problem with these cars. My car doesn't, or well right now it's gonna have it because I just drained all the fluid. But anyways, um, this right here will basically happen to you. You'll press down your clutch, it'll either be on a really hot day or something, you'll press it down, it'll stay down, you'll have to pull it back up manually, and it seems like it doesn't engage It's the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take these that clip out right up there, and I'm also gonna take out, there's a 12 millimeter bolt back there as well. There's one over there. And there's one up here as well. Looks like it's gonna be a little bit harder to get to that one on the right side, but all right. So I'm gonna take those out and I'll be right back. All right guys, so here's the little pin 
This is the one that I had to take out first and this one just slides right out. So basically that's out. Now all I have to do is take the two 12s out and that's it. Alright guys, so this is basically what I used to take it out. It was a 12 millimeter deep socket and this is a swiveling extension here. And uh, here's the two 12 millimeters. They weren't too terribly difficult to get to. I thought they were going to be a little bit harder, but they actually weren't. So. so, this should be pretty much free to come out now. Let's see if we can get this out. Alright, so here's the old one, it's not too bad, uh, it doesn't look too terrible, but I just wanted to replace it just so, uh, since I'm replacing everything anyways, and you can clearly see I should probably uh, uh, flush out this hose too. What I wanted to show you guys is, you can see this is my old one, and uh, this is my new one, and I'm going to count these threads here, so there's... There's um, one, two, three, four, and it ends on the fifth one. This is my old one. One, two, three, four, and it ends on the fifth one. So I actually don't even have to adjust this at all. I'm just gonna throw it in. So basically all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push this back through the hole and then uh, tighten the bolts down on the other side, just everything in reverse and uh, pretty much the same thing as when you took it off. Now, all I have to do up here is put the uh, line back on, the hard line, and then I'm going to uh, put the hose back on for the reservoir master cylinder down there. And that little hard line was the hardest part of up here. Honestly, the hard lines have been the toughest part of all of today. Everything else is pretty much straightforward, but just getting these, uh, getting these lined up and not stripping them is, uh, was the hardest thing. I mean, it wasn't too hard. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but now that that hard line's on, I'm just gonna throw this reservoir back up and then all we have to do is bleed everything. So, all right. Hey, can you transfer me to uh, the, what is it, the, not the parts department, but the service department? Did you need to make an appointment or speak with an advisor? I just needed to speak with someone uh, regarding a quote. Okay, give me one second, please. I'm just going to see how much this would cost to have it done by someone else. Hi, I was just wondering how much it would cost to, uh, I have, starting off, I have a, a 2005 Nissan 350Z. Okay. And it's a manual, and I wanted to know how much it would cost to replace the, uh, the clutch master cylinder and the slave cylinder. Okay. And you said for the slave cylinder 
Yeah. Yeah. An additional hour. So you're looking at a total of four fifty in labor. Okay. Let me get you I'll be able to give you a final price on that, okay? All right, thank you. Uh, 347.87. Okay, so how much are those two together? 481.77 plus tax. All right, and uh, could you see how much the tax would be on that? Just so I can get a rough figure of yeah. how much it would be total. 519.11. They wanted to charge $450 for labor, and then on top of that, they wanted about $500 for the parts. That is, and that's not even including the clutch, uh, the fluid either, the brake fluid, which is probably, I don't know, maybe even 15 bucks at the dealer, but all together, this is like a thousand dollar job if you were to take it to the dealer and it's really not that hard to do. If you buy all the parts and even if you buy the Motive Power Bleeder yourself, it's only going to cost right around, I want to say right around 300 bucks I spent on all of this, but that's including the, the, the power bleeder and the power bleeder you can use to bleed your brake system as well. You can use it with your brakes, you can flush your, your uh, clutch line whenever you want to. And especially if you go to track events a lot, you're supposed to bleed your, bleed your brakes a lot and replace that fluid because it breaks down really quickly, especially under high temperatures. So this is like, this is, it's crazy like how much money you're saving just by doing it yourself. Almost a grand. I, I guarantee you it would have been over a grand if I literally took my car there today and had them do it. So. I should have left this empty until I, I checked it for weeks. I, I could have checked it for weeks with the, the power bleeder, but I could have just pumped it up with just air and then uh, check for weeks that way. I shoved some uh, paper towels down here so I can make sure that if it is leaking that I can, I can definitely see it and I won't have to worry about um, uh, it spilling all over my paint or anything. I'm just going to pump it up slightly. I shouldn't really see. And I'm gonna have to lift the car back up, but I'm gonna pump the brake twice. I mean, sorry, pump the clutch twice. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this and then I'm going to open this uh, this bleeder valve and I should see um, a whole bunch of air bubbles and fluid coming out of it. There's a whole bunch of air. Now I've got fluid coming out. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open this slightly to relieve the pressure. And then I'm just gonna open this back up. Here goes a whole bunch of bubbles coming out. One thing I feel like I should mention is before you just hurry up because you're excited and you want to uh, you want to feel your clutch and you want to put everything back together, don't just take this off right away. You've got a lot of pressure in here. I've still got about 10 psi of pressure in here. That means if you open that up, it's just going to explode brake fluid all over the place and it's not going to be uh, very good for you. So. Just unscrew this first, and then that way it just relieves all the pressure, and you don't have to worry about um, it spilling all over the place. Now you can see a big difference in between the way my fluid looked before 
and the way it looks now. So I've got everything back together now and I'm gonna jump in the car. I just pulled the, uh, uh, the lift legs out from under. I'm gonna jump in real quick and see how this clutch feels. I might have to pump it a few times, but I don't know yet. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna pump it a few times. It actually feels pretty solid already. And it comes all the way up. And it engages like right away. It's That feels a lot more solid than before. It feels really nice. I'm gonna take it for a spin real quick. And uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit so I can close my hood. push it down it doesn't have a mushy feel at all anymore I mean it feels I mean however you think mushy feels but right now it feels very new and every every component basically of my clutch system is pretty much new besides my clutch right now so I don't have any issues right now and it, uh, it turned out really nice I think guys so that pretty much sums up today I'm gonna call it a day right now I'm probably gonna edit this video but I'll probably post it tomorrow um, so basically that was like a great I really think it was a great investment to do that because it it definitely made a big difference <laughs> I've got a big spot on my head but yeah it definitely made a big difference in the way uh, the clutch feels it feels much more solid it feels brand new so if you want to see how it feels go to a dealership and put your foot on a clutch pedal that's pretty much how it feels so I'm gonna end this video here I got a lot of more videos coming I'm probably gonna be doing sway bars next so hit that subscribe button if you like seeing 350z stuff I'm gonna be doing a lot more and uh, hit that like button if you like this video and like always if there's any part of this video or any part of the process that you have a question about you can always leave a comment I'd be glad to help that's why I'm making these videos I'm making them also to help you guys and also to just keep a record of everything that I've done. So, all right, I'll see you guys in the next video.